Hello there, history lovers, and welcome to another installment of Excellent Ancient History from Mr. P's World History HQ. Today we're going to take a look at the masks that were designed, crafted, and used by the ancient Greeks in their many plays. The masks we're going to see were used to portray different characters, creatures, and gods in many tragedies and comedies written during the classical Greek era, made from clay, painted in various colors, and made even more lifelike by adding, in some cases, real hair and facial features. During these plays, one to three actors would rotate through different masks to play the part of many characters. The goal of this video is to show off the artistic abilities of those mask makers, and to show how you might make one as part of a class project. Before we get to that though, here are a few examples of what the Greeks created centuries ago. Take a look at the fine details, the different colors and facial expressions, and keep them in your head as the video continues. Now that we've seen what the Greeks crafted, what does one do to create a realistic and workable mask of your own for any school plays you might be putting on, or just for fun? In the rest of this video, we'll go through a few steps and check out a few possible ideas to give you some inspiration. Number 1. The first thing you'll do before anything else is research for ideas. Before you start making your mask, you first need to decide on a design. Use the internet or books on Greek theater to inspire ideas of what your mask could look like. You don't have to base your own design on those examples, but they can guide you in the right direction if you don't know where to start. There are hundreds and hundreds of possibilities online. Copy one or use elements of different masks in designing your own. Number two. Next, decide what emotion you want your mask to convey. You should choose a simple but clear expression to represent. You may decide to make a mask that is happy, sad, angry, or excited. If you're making the mask for a particular play, think about your character and the primary emotions they feel during the play. Remember that you will be poking out eye holes, so make sure your design has large open eyes. Number three, draw your design. Once you've settled on a design, draw it on a piece of paper. Even though you won't actually use this paper to make your mask, recording your design will help you to remember exactly how you wanted it. Remember, the design doesn't have to be a work of art. You're going to save all your efforts for the final product. Just sketch it out. Once you've got a good idea ready, there are several ways you might choose to construct your mask. You can use any of these ways or talk with your history teacher if you have another idea. Idea number one. Create a mask from paper plates, cardboard, or cardstock. Paper plates and cardstock are the easiest materials to work with to make your mask. Cut out an oval shape in the materials that mimic the shape of your face. Make sure that the mask is sized to fit over your entire face. You don't want it to be too small. Draw your design under the material and use scissors to cut out the eyes and the mouth. Before drawing on the eyes and mouth, put the mask up to your face. With a pencil, make a mark where your eyes and mouth fall. Then draw the eyes and mouth over these marks and cut them out. Idea number two. Make a mask from paper mache, which you can buy at any art supply store. You can also use paper mache to build the mask around a balloon. First inflate a regular sized balloon and tie it. Take a couple strips of newspaper and dip them into the bowl of decoupage glue. Then stick them onto the balloon. Do this until you have two or three layers of newspaper in roughly the shape of a mask. Leave the paper mache for a couple hours to let it dry. Once it is dried, poke the balloon with a pin or other sharp object. Then peel the balloon away so you are left with just the mask. Cut out the eyes and the mouth. Use scissors to cut out the eyes and mouth hole. If you can't cut through the paper mache with scissors, use an X-Acto knife to cut out the holes, though you may want to have your parents or history teacher help you with that item. ID number three. This one may get a little bit messy, but in the end turns out the best. Make a mask with plaster bandages, which again can be gotten at most art supply stores. By using plaster, you can mold the mask to your face so that it fits perfectly. Before starting the mask though, apply a layer of Vaseline around the edge of your face near the hairline as well as over your eyebrows. 
put small squares of dampened paper towel over your eyes, then lie down and have a friend start layering on the plaster bandages by dipping them in water and putting them directly on your face. They should lie down around three edges of bandages. Make sure your friend keeps an eye on the mouth area and keeps it open. Peel off the mask when you're done and wash your face to get rid of any Vaseline or plaster and let it dry. Once you get the basic form of your mask made, it's time to start fine tuning your mask. Number one, strengthen the mask. If you made your mask from paper mache or bandages, you may want to reinforce your mask. If you notice any layers of the mask that poke out and interfere with the shape, trim them with scissors. You can also sand them down using sandpaper. Also use glue to reinforce layers that are peeling apart from each other. Number two, create features. If you want your mask to look more realistic, add on to it to create features. If you use paper mache, you can add features like a nose, cheekbone, or lips by adding on more paper. You can also model features out of clay and paper mache around them, then glue the features onto the mask. If you made your mask from bandages, you can also put on new bandages if you want to exaggerate the shape of a certain feature or reinforce thin layers. Three, you want your mask to be as colorful as possible, so now that you're done making the basic shape of the mask, go ahead and color it as you see fit. You may decide to paint a flesh tone over your whole mask and then paint on features like lips or eyebrows. You can also go for bolder, non-traditional colors. Do whatever you feel best suits your imagination and design. If you've made the mask from cardstock or paper plates, you can use crayon, marker, or paint to color the mask. If you use paper mache or bandages, you should paint your mask because crayons and markers won't be as effective on these materials. Number four, add hair. Many Greek theater masks also included hair. If you're happy with the way your mask looks, you don't have to add hair. Or if you do want to add hair, use construction paper, wool, yarn, or whatever material you have available. Adding hair can make your mask look more realistic and human-like. Five, finally add an elastic or yarn strap so that you can wear your mask. Poke holes on each side of the mask, string elastic or yarn through one of the holes, then tie it to secure it. Do the same on the other side. Adding elastic allows you to wear your mask without holding it up so that you can use your hands freely. Hopefully that gives you some ideas to work with as you plan your mask for your upcoming performance. Make sure that you run any questions past your history teacher as you'll want your mask to turn out as well as possible. They're usually a pretty good sounding board for ideas and can help with the fine details. You know, I'm not biased or anything. Above all, let your creativity run loose and have some fun. If you're an educator or student listening to this, feel free to use this video for your own classes and projects, and check out a few of the links at the end of this video for extra information and visuals on Greek masks and Greek culture. Hope you found this video useful, thank you for the viewership and support, and we'll see you again real soon with another wild adventure in ancient legendary awesomeness. Until next time, this is Mr. P of Mr. P's World History HQ saying, dig into some incredible history, have a ton of fun doing it, and above all, learn something new and amazing.